Hey guys, righto, so winter is here now um, and being part of the reptile hobby there is that unfortunate thing sometimes that you are going to come through some sort of sickness with your uh, reptiles. Now whether that be um, through an injury or through something like the common flu, um, just for respiratory infection uh, in snakes and all that kind of stuff, most reptiles will get it. Um, that you're going to need to do um, some injections as well as some other stuff that your vet is going to recommend. Now, um, a lot of the vets will teach you how to do the injections, um, but it's one of those things where it's very, very overloading, uh, especially for the first time, especially if you're not sort of confident in the way of being able to restrain a snake and be able to give them injections and that. So what I'm going to do today, guys, I'm just going to take you through one of the hours. Um, has just recently got uh, RI through a malfunctioning uh, heat rack. Um, so it, it happens, it's not one of those things where, you know, you've got to jump up and down about and, you know, go and quarantine and, you know, take all your snakes to the vet. Um, as long as you keep everything clean, you've been doing your proper quarantine type stuff in between all your reptiles, there's generally a very, very low case of transmission um, unless they're sort of in the same tank together, um, which is why you never recommend having, you know, multiple reptiles within a tank other than the obvious issues that are going to come from cohabitation. Um, so, Basically, for today, what I'm going to show you guys how is obviously how to do um, injections, how to uh, also do a nasal flush, um, and if you aren't aware or are confident in doing it, probably when you see your vet and they say, hey, look, you're going to have to give some antibiotics that are an injection, get them to do it one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, they'll more than likely help you do the first one, um, and then you can go home and obviously do it. So. What we need for today, obviously the big one, F10, okay, you need to do your hands before or after, you need to wipe the tables down, you need to anything that you've used to um, handle the snake or anything like that, you need to wash down with F10, I can't stress that in any way of more importance. Um, from that, obviously we're going to need to get uh, some syringes, um, now these are needless ones, you can just pick them up from any chemist, they're usually anywhere from 50 cents um, to like a $2 mark, depending on how, you know, much they want to take off here. You're going to need some saline, okay? Don't use regular water, it has to be saline, um, being that we're using it for a medical purpose. And then obviously we have our injection uh, itself. Um, so depending on what they are, there'll be, um, a, there's about three different antibiotics that vets can use, uh, and that'll be up to their discretion on a what they've had some success with in the season um, or in that last sort of six month period and they'll just sort of recommend what's the best one. They'll do a weight check of your um, reptile being any, whichever one you get, and then there'll be a dosage rate for that. Um, so first things first, obviously we've got to get um, the reptile out. Um, now, whenever you're handling snakes, remember that they are sick. Um, so you're gonna find that a lot of the time that stress is gonna be one of the biggest things that you've got to try and combat rather than anything else, um, as well as probably your quarantine would be probably one of the hardest things as well. So when we're looking at uh, obviously getting the, um, the snakes out, they're probably going to be quite lethargic in that anyway. Just being sick, they're sort of not going to be too keen um, to be handled in that. Um, and generally, the way you can tell that there's something wrong with them is that they've got this really ratty chest um, and a lot of mucus in their mouth. Um, so as you can see, you know, there's a bit of mucus and stuff in there. So we don't want to overstress them out by trying to do too much things with them. We just want to get them out and get them um, put away pretty good. So whenever we're restraining a snake, um, the best way to do it um, is to have either one of your index fingers under the jawline there so that they have access to being able to breathe. And then obviously one on top of the head because that's how we can manipulate the head down when we're doing the nasal flushing so that we get all that saline um, out of it. Um, so first things first guys, what we're going to do is obviously the injection, this is what's going to help them fight that um, infection or that, you know, infection in parts of their hands and that if they've had an injury uh, and all that kind of stuff. So the first thing you want to do is obviously just double check that you're getting out all those air bubbles. Um, so once we get all those air bubbles out, um, you know, we're good to go. We don't want to put any air pockets in their system. Little bubbles is, is no trouble. Um, so it's not like it's a big deal for them. Um, so don't stress if there is that little one that you can't get out. It, once it goes through the lymphatic system, it'll be fine. So most vets will have their way of doing things. Um, I know some vets like to have it quite high up um, where the heart nut is. Um, for me, I normally just try and pick um, somewhere in the back end here that's got a nice bit of tissue um, that they can do that. Um, so as you can see, we've got this little bit here. Um, so with that needle, we're just gonna go up into 
the, the skin lay there using one of the entrance parts for the scaling. Once we get that needle in there and it's all the way through, just gently and slowly put that antibiotic um, into their system. Now some might not like it, it does hurt them. Same way that when you get a needle, it's gonna hurt you. Um, and then when we put the, the needle cap on, obviously we're gonna put the top of the needle in through the top and then we're gonna right angle it up onto the table. We're not actually gonna use two hands to put it back on because um, we don't wanna get a needle stick injury from us um, once we've already had that needle in a sick animal. Um, that's generally not gonna be too good for you anyway. So once we've done that, um, we start to prep obviously for our nasal flushing. Now nasal flushing is a good thing um, and the reason why it's really, really good um, is it just sort of gives them about four hours of relief um, from that congestion inside the nasal cavity, um, which allows them just to be able to have that ability to breathe. When you find a lot of them, they'll be like, because they just can't breathe. They're trying to cycle that through and it's just too much mucus in there. So for that, we're gonna get one of our salines, uh, one of our syringes, um, and when we open that up, we're just gonna pull that back end out, okay? From there, what we're gonna do is we'll just break off the top here. Now, depending on the size of the syringes and that that you use, depends on sort of how much you can do in one go. Um, I tend to like to go about five to, to 10 mil through each nostril. Um, it just helps flush that out. Um, so we're gonna do that. These are just little five mil ones. Um, it gives you a pretty good sort of indication of exactly what you've done. And then we're just gonna put, obviously, all that saline um, solution into there and then we'll just put that down on the table. And then when we do it, we just get enough traction in that, up end it, and then that way we can push all that air out um, without having to squirt it all over the joint once we get it in there. So once we've got that, this is where that stress really is important um, to make sure that you really try and minimize it the best that you can um, for your snake. Now, I like to use gauze pad, it kind of lets the saline um, flow through it, but we pick up all that mucusy stuff. So these you just buy from the chemist as well with the um, thing. So what I like to do is I hold it like this in between my fingers. So it gives it a nice straight edge. These guys are actually quite thick, um, so they're really, really good. And then when we go to pull our snake out, wherever it is, there we are. All right, so we're back to our little three-pointer contact hole. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have this. I'm just gonna apply a small amount of traction to that bottom jaw, and then we just lift up nice and gently. As we do that, her jaw is gonna to wanna to open up anyway, because they don't like that. So it's not forceful, we're not jamming it in there. We're literally just having it there. After a second or two, um, we can then apply a little bit of pressure just in being able to secure that and as you can see they don't like it it's quite stressful for them um, so then from there obviously we're going to put our um, saline solution um, through each side of that nostril and we're just going to let it flow now we're not injecting this straight into their um, obviously into their lungs or anything like that that's literally flowing from the tip of the nostril here down into the top of the, um, the skull in the inside of their mouth, um, just there, um, which is where all that mucusy stuff will sort of pour out from. So nice, easy, gentle flow. Once we've done one side, we're gonna let her go. Now this is what we put in a bag, okay? We get rid of that because what we wanna do is now we wanna set up for that uh, right hand side. Um, so that we can do that. So we just put it away, give it a couple of seconds just to calm down and just relax, de-stress um, while we then get the second go um, started. You don't need to get a new syringe um, each time you do a nostril. Um, at the end of the day, they've got RI or they've got like something going on that you're flushing anyway. So you're gonna be moving stuff through the system. Righto, so again, we just get a couple of bits of gauze so that we can put that back in uh, her mouth. We fold this in half. Now you can use paper towel, um, but I find with paper towel, when it gets wet, because their teeth are so fine, 
um, often their teeth sort of catch a lot of the fibers of the paper towel um, and they will generally sort of break it up in their mouth and then you've got to try and you know do a saline flush to get some of that stuck out as well which is not a big deal um, it's just you know if you can avoid it you, you definitely do that so again we're just going to manipulate that jaw um, up and down which just gives us the ability to then get that in there nicely and then we can just slightly close that over it okay now we're going to come in from this other one we're going to angle that nostril pointing down and flush up so we go in and we're just going to flush nice and slowly that five mil through there. Again, we'll just let her try and take that out in her own time. And then again, we just throw that in the bag that we've had um, there as well. Now also, I like to, when I do it, I just have a bit of a um, bit of gauze just underneath the, the, the head there. I sort of roll them onto their side just so that we can sort of, uh, I don't know if you can see that, just so that we can get a little bit of the, the movement there. Then with the last little bit of our 30 mil, we can just flush all that out for her and um, just sort of clean up a lot of that little bit of mucus and stuff that, you know, she's got left lying around and then we just throw that out as well so there's some of the things that you can uh, do um, with your reptiles when they do have RI um, you now just because they have RI doesn't mean that you've done anything particularly wrong um, there can be small husbandry things that you know affect obviously reptiles being that if you keep them in a filthy environment um, or incorrect substrate often you'll find that you know you can increase a lot of the chances of RI um, I have 10 at the end guys um, and you know it, it's just one of those things that unfortunately it's it's just a thing that happens um, so there is an easy option um, it's just a vet do your flushing and all that kind of stuff it helps them be able to breathe and get that mucus out anyway um, which is reducing the amount of bugs that they're going to have um, so it's really really good so that's just a snake um, if you've obviously got an injured um, blue tongue bearded dragon whatever you have got uh, at home as well you can get injections as i've said for that as well as you can get a bite oral um, antibiotic just depends on the vet and also exactly sort of what the injuries and how bad those injuries are um, if it's already infected you're probably going to have to do um, injectable stuff but you know your vet will tell you what that is um, as i'm not a vet so it's kind of one of those things i can't tell you so if you do find that they've got rattly um, chests or they've got mucus in their mouth or anything like that, it is always best um, to go to a vet straight away and then get it all checked out. Um, you know, vets know mostly what's going on, um, so if you can get it sorted, the quicker you get it sorted and the quicker that you can do um, your, in, your injection straight in, get those antibiotics working, the better the chances are that they'll be able to recover a lot quicker from that. So really really good the other things you can do um, with inside um, you know the scope of your ability at home that doesn't actually take any sort of you know skill which is that injections or anything like that is you can put in like a, a humidifier and inside that humidifier you're going to put 10 mil of f10 to a liter of water and you work out whatever your volume is and then inside of that i like to put a couple of drops of uh, eucalyptus um, as well as some vix now the vix and eucalyptus just helps open the airways up and keep the, the mucus out and then obviously the, the humidity then helps put a bit of that stuff back into the lungs as well. Um, and you know, a lot of vets will tell you that that is very helpful. Um, the other thing that is really, really important is cleaning out their tanks every single day using F10. Um, and I normally try and go on the stronger side, so I'll put 10 mil into, two, uh, into a, a 750 mil spray bottle. Um, so it is very, very strong. Um, doesn't sound like it, but F10 is extremely strong. So. Those sort of things that you can do is what you can do at home with your own capability once you've been shown once or twice. Um, and depending on the vet and what they want you to do at home, they will then instruct you how to do that also. Um, so lastly for me guys, if you have any dramas or you do find that you have, uh, you know, find yourself in that kind of situation where you do need to put antibiotics in, either by injections or anything like that, feel free um, to send us a message and that we can help you through. Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff because it, it is quite simple um, and it doesn't need to be a brain surgeon um, to be able to get all that kind of stuff sorted out for yourself um, and education is key once you know it you can help somebody else out um, and then that's obviously you know exponential across the hobby so 
that is the future of the whole you being able to you know do that kind of stuff and then help others all right guys so that's it from me i uh, hope you enjoyed the video this sort of stuff doesn't really come up a lot um, in big collections you'll see it maybe half a dozen times a year depending um, on all sorts of things um, so yeah if you ever have any dramas and you need some more information or whatever always come see me give me a call uh, message the facebook page and we can give you a hand all right guys enjoy